Okay, so hello and welcome back. And today's gonna be actually quite a bit of a different video. So instead of doing um, more of a history video, I'm talking more about a, well, topic that I found. And sorry for the resolution on this. Um, OBS being OBS is kind of weird sometimes. So hopefully this, well, this will work. I, I have to cr crop out some stuff along the side so it's easier to see, but we'll, um, We'll just get into this. This is going to be a different kind of video, a little bit more experimental. We're going to be talking about some lost, quote-unquote, transcontinental railroads that were never really built in the United States, but were, let's just say, semi-planned um, before they were uh, not done at all. So we'll um, just get into this. There's going to be at least three. There's going to be three of these, and then some of my own just talking about them as we go on in life. So let's just get into this. So the first one we're going to be talking about, or at least not today, is the uh, Chicago Northwestern. At one point, they actually did want to build a line all the way to California, and this would, be, would have been an extension of their cowboy line from Lander, which is the um, end of the map here, like over here in Wyoming, that's Lander, to out west to somewhere in California, Oregon. Their title, their targets were Eureka, which is where on the map I'm showing and assuming this would end, which is Arcata. Um, Eureka right here. The other option was up north here in Coos Bay, right here. And um, we're just going to talk, get into it about why, um, just a little bit about the history. So the logical path to head west uh, from Lander, let's just get over here in the map, from Lander. As far as I can tell, would have been to head south and eventually head towards probably Logan and eventually, you know, build a spur down to Ogden to continue to connecting, then build over and along through southern Idaho, eventually getting to here, Jordan Junction, Jordan Valley, where I would expect there to be a junction and probably an extension into the Boise area, considering there's not like a lot of traffic, not a lot of traffic, but there's no route between Boise and California. I'd imagine a branch line out here would get built eventually. And eventually, you know, dropping down into California through um, Alturas area and into uh, through Bieber. This is where the inside gateway connects, or would connect, but at least would cross. And eventually dropping into Redding, going over the Trinity Mountains, and eventually into Arcata. To me, this is the logical path. I know some people would probably it'd vary, but I think this would be the way it would go. And um, why would they not go to Coos Bay? So the Southern Pacific, I, it, I don't remember, because this would have been like, about the same time the uh, Milwaukee Road built their Pacific Extension, or maybe give or take a decade or sooner. And I think by then the Southern Pacific was trying to build the Natron, Natron or Natron, not entirely sure how to pronounce that because Oregon and me, in California, me thinking Spanish. I think they would have been trying to build that by that point. I do remember that by the time the Western Pacific was going, they were fully building that. Uh, can't remember the dates, didn't put it in the notes, but I do think by then they would have already been building that, and they would have, and the Chicago Northwestern would need that to get into Oregon. And given the SP's dominance in the area, I don't think the uh, that would have been the most likely path. I think they would have had to have gone south through Redding and over the Trinity Mountains, which would have been difficult, but it would have been their second choice. And, um, you know, anyways, but how would it go? Um, I would imagine that this would probably go worse than the Milwaukee Road Pacific Extension. The uh, Chicago and Northwestern would have, you know, all of the debt, or at least a similar amount of debt, the uh, Milwaukee Road would have had, but there would have been far less traffic. There wouldn't have been as many branch lines. This is still, I mean, they, let me just scroll out on this. This area of, like, southern, like, Idaho into like the northern part of Nevada and into like this area of California is still fairly undeveloped. So you actually can see that. Like this entire area from like where the um, inside gateway would cross into like Logan is still a fairly undeveloped area. Like I mean Twin Falls in this area here is like the most developed even to this day. And there they'd be largely paralleling the um, UP which would you know add complications into their business plan. And um, the reason why, uh, just for context with the Milwaukee Road, they also did take on a bunch of indebted railroads at the time. And basically, they just all, the railroads they all absorbed were all just drowning in their own collective debt. And the Milwaukee Road just was never able to balance that, never got any of it discharged through its two bankruptcies. And um, although, and then there's debatably the Milwaukee Road specific extension was maybe a break even operation, if not a slight profit operation, even at the end. But 
the Milwaukee Road just was just drowning in so much death they couldn't, you know, they never were able to make an honest go of it. And like I mentioned, I do think they'd go from the Jordan Valley, which is where the little dot is on the map, up into Boise, just because there isn't really a connection between California and Idaho to this day. And it would make sense that they would try for the sake of traffic. And um, this entire line would be a gamble to develop an area and generate new revenue, along with um, trying to dip into the shipping from California, of which Eureka is, is, is not a big port and probably will not be a big port at any point in, um, honestly, any time soon. So um, what would I expect things to happen? This is where we're going to get into like the blue lines here. So I would expect that the Northwestern Pacific, which are the mostly a, a example of being the blue lines, the Northwestern Pacific is going to get its own video someday eventually, not right now though. But I'd imagine at some point, um, let me pull, that this, uh, the route here along what's now 101, I'd imagine they would build that line. So for those of you who don't really know much about the Northwestern Pacific Railroad and its history, and its history, um, the main line actually runs through this valley here along um, Fort Seward, Alder Point, and eventually hooks back in uh, to the main line here at Longvale. So from Longvale, it actually goes up up this valley along the South Fork of the Eel River, North Fork of the Eel River. I'm not entirely sure which Fork of the Eel River, but it goes up here through and eventually um, gets into Rio Dell. The problem with that line is when they built it poorly too, it's, it's also in a very geologically unstable area. This area also not particularly geologically stable either, but it's slightly more geologically stable in the grand scheme of things. But I'd imagine that they would try to go for this route because one, that's where most of the people are, where most of the businesses. And if it was knowing how spiteful the SP was in a lot of its history, especially in the, like the teens and twenties, I'd imagine they would just build this out of spite just to lock the Chicago and Northwestern out of a North South um, corridor or just business in the Humboldt and Mendocino areas, which is are the counties that these uh, railroads exist in. It also just cut off a logical path to the Bay Area. And they would just do this because, again, they're spiteful and they're seeing a new railroad trying to muscle in on their territory and just building the secondary line again, just a way just to keep them from being a problem. And I would also guess at the same time, the inside gateway would be a higher priority um, to compete with the soon to be completed Chicago Northwestern. And I'd imagine that um, at least up here on this part of the Northwest Chicago, uh, the Northwestern Pacific, I'd imagine they would have they would have pushed through the connection to Grants Pass. Now I'll get into this more when I actually do the history of the Northwestern Pacific proper. But one of their goals, at least at one point, I'm not entirely sure when they kind of left, gave up on this goal. But they did want to have a connection from Grants Pass to Marin County and probably into the East Bay at one point. But for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure, and I can't really find too much information on this and at least in cursory uh, research, that they wanted the whole coastal route, like a third north-south route in California, and it just never happened. Not sure why. We'll figure that out eventually. So in the long term, this is kind of what I'd imagine the, like, the route would be going forward. So I'd imagine sometime between 1946 and 1960, um, they would have realized it was a much bigger gamp gamble than the Milwaukee Road Pacific Extension. And given the modern development patterns in southern Idaho, I doubt things would have gone much differently. And I imagine it would have been a lot worse for the Chicago Northwestern um, than the Milwaukee Road. And because of how cheap they were, especially um, go as the 20th century wore on, I'd imagine they'd want to cut their losses a lot faster. And again, again, this is a far... like The Milwaukee Road had a very unpopulated like working territory to like deal with, like work with as it got further and further west. There's basically no one in these areas, at least especially in Idaho. So I doubt they would have um, tried to keep the line going much at all past 1960. So, but the effect is, I, unlike the other railways in the area, I would guess that the Northwestern Pacific, probably along the 101 corridor, which is the um, this part right here. This is this is what I'd imagine like most of the Northwestern Pacific to look like today. Uh, the orange would be the orange lines. I'd imagine they would have kept open the uh, 101 corridor and abandoned the uh, this gray here, which is the um, original NCRA, uh, the current Eel River alignment. I say alignment with quotes, but um, I imagine that it would have been abandoned at some point. 
But I would imagine that the Northwestern Pacific would probably still be open because I'd imagine even with them trying to box out, they probably would have built the other line slightly better. It would have been easier to keep open. So I'd imagine the Northwestern Pacific would be the orange lines here. And I do think that they probably would have, for the sake of spite, um, finished their line in some form between Albion and uh, the main line, uh, either in Healdsburg, which are where it originally would have gone, or maybe even into Cloverdale. This also here is the Guerneville branch that would have gotten abandoned. These are other parts of the NWPA I still would have expected to be abandoned. I only put those on because I am people who uh, live in this area really love the NWP. They might watch it, they might be curious, but I'll go into this more when I have a uh, NWP-centric video, which I have no idea when that's going to be. And so when it comes to other um, issues or what are routes of the railroad, uh, given that the other NWP route would have been the better route into Humboldt County and the router of the Trinity Mounds would be redundant, I would guess that at some point um, the Trinity Mound route would have just gotten sold off. It might have been kept open for some period of time and there would have eventually been some sort of business collapse which would have created, which would have led to the creation of the North Coast Rail Authority which has been abolished or dissolved or whatever by legislation a year or two ago. I do think um, it still would have been created, but it would have been managing a slightly more healthy railroad. But like I said, I do think the abandonment of the um, Eel River route, the existing route, would have happened sometime between 1990, 1971 and 1989. Since with the creation of Amtrak, the lifeline passenger service on that route was discontinued with Amtrak's creation. And I would imagine the state would maybe try to keep the line open for a few years after Amtrak, or at least until Amtrak was created. But after that, they probably would stop carrying, which as I said, would lead to them being, um, that line being dropped at some point. And also uh, the Trinity Alps line, I would expect it would also be a maintenance headache since it's also in like a very geologically unstable area. And so I would imagine they would probably also drop it or they might keep it open. I'm not really sure. Like I, I've heard very conflicting things about the geology of that area. I just know it's unstable, but unstable relative to what? I'm not really sure. And um, yeah, and, and from what I can tell, a lot of this is fraught with discussions between it could never happen and it could happen with the rosiest projections possible. That being said, I also wouldn't expect the NC the North Coast Rail Authority wouldn't run the lines into Oregon should they have ever been built, and I'd imagine that would be like North of Crescent City would be a different company or agency should they survive. And I also will note that this would have been a really nice passenger route if you could have gotten a Portland um, like Bay Area to Portland route through the coastal area. That would be just really beautiful and would probably be better um, scenery wise than probably the um, existing Starlight route is. And also, I will say, like, as part of the um, other aspects of this, I'd imagine even if, like, wherever the whole Jordan Valley is in this area, it's, hold on, it's where the little white highlight ends, I'd imagine that someone would probably try to keep the Reading to Boise portion open, whether it be the SP or a short line or something, considering it's a, you know, a non-existent connection in our world, I'd imagine that someone would have tried to keep it going. So what would be the impact on the cities along the line? And um, if you think Reading and Eureka would be like these massive cities now, no, I, I seriously doubt that would happen. The best case scenario I would imagine is that Reading would it be about twice the size that it is now with a larger economy. And Eureka would be larger than it is now, but I wouldn't really imagine by that much. Given that the current population of Humboldt County is around 136,000 people, I couldn't imagine it being more than 180 if the railroad was still running and uh, a port had gotten more developed in its heyday. But it being like a city the size of Oakland, oh, oh no, no, that would not have happened. So the impact on the Chicago and Northwestern, uh, given that it was always a strong ally of the UP, if they did this, I can imagine them getting entirely cut off from any business uh, from the Union Pacific, which would have hurt them a lot. And since this would have been going around the time that Harriman was alive, uh, the SP also would have uh, cut off a lot of the their traffic, you know, that could have possibly been sent over the Chicago Northwestern instead, which would have likely have meant a switch to the Milwaukee Road at Omaha, which means that the, um, oh, you know, the Milwaukee Road would have been a lot better off. And given this loss, there's no way that the Chicago Northwestern would have been as strong as it was through the dark days of um, the 1970s, even with um, being cheap and striking it lucky with the Powder River Basin. 
So the Chicago Northwestern's misfortune in this case would be the Milwaukee Road's gain. The Milwaukee Road probably wouldn't have... Like, they probably wouldn't have had, like, a perfect go of it either, but they would have been um, the one that would have survived effectively. And at least its holdings in Washington, I would imagine, would have been sold off to the Union Pacific at some point. Which also means that the Chicago Northwestern line through Iowa probably would have been the one to have got, been abandoned instead of the Milwaukee Road route. And before someone goes, well, their line was shit, we are talking alternate history where they actually would have had enough business and resources to do, you know, reasonable modernization and this would have been entirely at the, expense, ex, at the expense of the Chicago Northwestern. And if they had been dumb enough to stretch itself, you know, west of Ogden. And on, I, I just do think that that part would have been ripped to shreds. And it would um, basically mean that the Chicago Northwestern would be seen as the one to make a very stupid transcontinental gamble, not the Milwaukee Road. Because the Chicago Northwestern would have been the one that would have collapsed and been shredded in the... I would imagine parts of the Milwaukee Road would still be around today. Well, more than exists today, at least. Which was a line that was supposed to connect Richmond to Stockton and then points east through the Sonora Pass or Sonora Junction. And only a few parts of this line was built, from what I can tell. The part from Stockton to Richmond has actually became part of the Santa Fe line, which is now um, still existing under, under BNSF. And maybe the line as far as Sonora got built. Since this line never really got going, I'm not entirely sure what path they would have taken east to get to Utah, let alone where they would have gone after that. My best guess, based on the topography and the map that I've um, put up, is that they would have likely gone into like Smith Valley, Nevada, and then run to Urington or Shures before eventually running along um, Highway 50 to somewhere near Provo, or at least close to the Highway 50 alignment. So um, what was likely to happen? So in my digging for this, I actually heard some rumors that the Santa Fe wanted a northern transcon to Richmond along with its eastern routes. And what is more likely to me is that the Santa Fe would have taken over the Rio Grande during their literal shooting war in the 1870s instead of making peace with them. And the Santa Fe eventually building out the Rio Grande and Western Pacific. So the, the reason why the line that I think would be the most likely line of the California-Nevada is red is because I don't think they would have ever built it. Um, and I do think that the green line, which is the Western Pacific line, and the blue line, which is the Rio Grande line, I do think that would have gotten built. Like, that would have been what they would have gone for instead. And the yellow lines are just uh, potential retaliatory or them the Santa Fe trying to be expansionary into California. And... You know, again, you see it's mostly into the North Bay. I'd imagine they would have tried to, uh, them and the SP either would have had a rivalry for what's now the Northwestern Pacific Railroad, or they would have um, eventually just had a much bigger system. So in this case, they would have probably done the whole, what the Chicago and Northwestern did in the last video, but they just wouldn't exist in this. And I also will say, I do think that this is a uh, fairly mutually exclusive option. Like, I don't think the Chicago and Northwestern would have built west should the Santa Fe have gotten its northern transcon. I just don't think it would have been in the cards. And also, I do think that they would have built to Hone Pass on their own, because that was also one of the plans for the uh, Santa Fe, was to build their own connection from Bakersfield to Los Angeles. And it was actually the Panic of 1893 that kept that from happening. So I do think that they would have eventually just had like their own loop uh, and southern and northern transcon like the SP did. But it would have been, you know, Santa Fe all the way. And also I mentioned that this would have probably all happened about 20 years before the actual Western Pacific as we know it would have been built, which if they got it going by the Panic of 1893 would have given it like 20 years and a much bigger railroad to try to like build a business with. Along with, you know, again, building their own link to, uh, you know, L.A. And uh, why, before I totally move on, like, why do I think that the Highway 50 alignment wouldn't have been used? And the main reason being is there's just not really any reason to build a railroad in that area. All the main towns along Highway 50 had narrow gauge lines running north and south from the Overland route. And given that US 50 is considered the loneliest road in America, I can't imagine that a transcontinental railroad along that area would have done better than the Western Pacific alignment. And given that it made more sense to go through Beckworth Pass than over the Sonora Pass or Great, I'm not entirely sure what they refer to it as. It doesn't really show up on a map, and I can't get a clear answer from Googling. 
So it, it just since back where Beckworth Pass, which is the Western Pacific route, is just so much gentler of a grade. I can't imagine that anyone would have gone for a much worse routing. And given by then, they would have already known that it existed. So again, it's just not a, a nonsensical thing. So as far as a uh, there being a railway would have been, I don't really know. A really fuzzy Wikipedia map just shows a straight line across Nevada where literally no one lives. And a lot of railroads were also just schemes to get money to build things. And a major example of this is actually a lot of streetcar companies really being organized to develop and sell land. So it wouldn't surprise me if the California and Nevada was more of a quasi scan to build something else. And the railroad was just a means to get the money. Or they were banking on there being timber or mining interests in that part of Nevada in the Sierras. So the part like pretty much pretty much the, like the part like instead of maybe going as far as Carson City, like anything after that would have just been like a pipe dream that would have never happened. So um, what would this mean for California? Um, aside from the SP having competition much sooner, this would change things actually a lot. The SP effectively had no competition um, in California for a very long time. And this wouldn't mean the settlement patterns in California would have changed. Um, especially I do think they would have tried to go for the Redwood region a lot more like quicker and a lot more with a lot more fervor. Like given that like the Redwood Redwood Coast, like the North Coast was known to have a lot of good timber even long before uh, the railroads were built in the late 1800s and early 20th century, I do think they would have gone for that a lot sooner. And uh, this also would mean that the SP wouldn't be the, you know, quote unquote, the octopus for as long, and they wouldn't have had just the effect on the politics of California. And to put it bluntly, like the um, California politics would have also very much changed because a lot of California politics, even to this day, are we're dealing with like the after effects of the government is structured so the SP doesn't end up running everything, which leads to a lot of issues with local government being incredibly inefficient and the state being very ambivalent to everything. Like, I do think that attitude wouldn't have existed since there would have been at least two large business interests in the state and there would have been less of a concern of, oh, one, the one corporation that's bought off our state government now runs everything, that that would have just gone away at some point. And if the Santa Fe did control the Western Pacific, Rio Grande, I'm not really giving it a name, um, it would likely mean more settlement in the northern central valley the north coast the eastern sierras because there would have been a railroad sooner possibly there would have been land grants in that area for the railroad which means it could have just opened up a lot more settlement a lot sooner than it otherwise would have and also um people in north coast who like the uh, nwp also sometimes forget that the santa fe was involved with the nwp in the early days for a time with the sp it's, it's kind of mentioned as a footnote in history in, in the story of the Northwestern Pacific because they were only involved for about 20 or so years of its existence. But this region was also prime real estate for a railroad and just development in general. And given um, a more, you know, a Santa Fe dominated Western Pacific, I could see them making a play for the North Coast and the North State a lot sooner and a lot more forcefully. Uh, the Western Pacific eventually bought the Sacramento Northern, and all of this happening 20 years sooner, or the Sacramento Northern just never existing and just being a part of the Western Pacific proper from the beginning, um, it would just change the development patterns because, you know, you're opening up a railroad, there's competition with the SP, that means people might move closer to the other line because they don't want to deal with the, West, the Southern Pacific, you know, and then that just gets into a whole mess of changing development patterns. And also one of the planned extensions for the Western Pacific, Sacramento Northern, was to connect Chico and Redding and eventually making a play at Oregon, which happened with the um, which happened with the Inside Gateway, which I do imagine would have been built a lot sooner in this um, scenario. And I also could see them making a run um, at going over the Trinity Mountains or th through Clear Lake to Ukiah, which is... Um, I'm actually just zooming. I, I know where these places are, but I know the people who are watching this likely don't. So Ukiah is here. I'd imagine they would have eventually tried to build a line through here, connecting to the northwestern Pacific somewhere in here. And again, them just trying to do more um, expansionism in this part of the state, which they may have gotten land grants, which, you know, you're getting a huge timber stand, huge land grants there would have been a very... Um, just a big business target for the railroads, especially considering that if this was all going on in like the pre-1893, the government was handing out land like candy. So I can imagine that if it was happening, if all this expansion was happening then instead of in late 1913, yeah, there would have been a lot different development, not really a lot different development patterns, but it would have developed a lot sooner than it did. 
But overall, I do think the Northwestern Pacific would have gotten formed in the way it did with it being a joint ownership of the Santa Fe and the Southern Pacific. Since there really wasn't an, the ability to stay in two railroads in the North Coast, even even with like a more developed area, I don't think they would have gone for um, two railroads either. So it would make sense that after a building rush prior to the 18, either prior to 1893 or before 1900, just before 1900 in general, they would have come to that conclusion that one jointly owned subsidiary is better than trying to keep two competing lines afloat. In the Eastern Sierras, I'd imagine there'd be a similar pattern. Um, the Inside Gateway getting built sooner and there possibly being settlement sooner right, along with them getting land grants because again, the government handed out land like candy prior to like 1893, <laughs> which would mean a slightly larger but not dramatically larger population than there is now. And again, like the last scenario, I doubt the main line uh, would have been you know, a huge dramatic impact on the population uh, in our point in history. Like there, the population peak might've been higher, but I don't think the present population would be that much bigger than it is now, given, you know, development patterns and the rest of, uh, you know, humanity in the ensuing century or so. Which is to say that, yeah, the towns might be bigger and there might be more of them, but there's not gonna be like a million, like Alturas isn't gonna be a million person city, I'm sorry. <laughs> So as for modern outcomes, other than the Southern Pacific and California politics being different, the North Coast, I'd imagine they might still have an active rail line if it was over the Alps. I do think that they, I don't think they would have built the like 101 alignment. Like I'd imagine they would have just, that the they would have built despite the Chicago Northwestern. So I do think that there might still be an operating short line in the North Coast, but like the connection north of Willits wouldn't be there at all. And that south of Willits would be its own line and then over the Trinity Mountains would be its own separate line with possibly the connection up into Medford as well. But in the grander scheme of things, like I do think all the, like the red lines on this are actually just would be what I had imagined the Santa Fe proper would have looked like and the gray lines would have either been abandoned or never built or possibly under some other different, you know, ownership. But there are some like, other knock-on effects that would have happened from this. Like I, the Union Pacific would have been completely blocked from Northern California if the Santa Fe had managed to maintain control over the Western Pacific and eventually absorb it. But I'm not entirely sure if they would have done this or if um, the consolidation would have gone the same. But I do imagine the Santa Fe would have wanted to keep the Western Pacific Rio Grande, whatever they would have called the company, and eventually in the, in the hopes of absorbing it. Which um, I do think would have hurt the SP a little bit. Since, this, since California was the Southern Pacific's home turf, and I don't know how many people who don't live in California or don't care about the rail history of the state very much realize that, I do think this would have like scared the Southern Pacific into probably becoming a lot more involved with the Rock Island and Cotton Belt sooner, and maybe even the Chicago and Eastern Illinois, just for the connection between um, St. Louis and, um, or at least the Cotton Belt system and the Chicago area. And since the SP didn't fully take control of the um, El Paso and Southwestern in the 1920s, I'd imagine that they would have probably tried to do this a lot sooner, like in the 1880s, or at least pre-1900, since they would want a more active role in Arizona and New Mexico to expand and try to cut the Santa Fe off. So I'd imagine that circa 1899, the Rock Island was also going, since it was going through its leadership changes, uh, which brought about the business group that I've only seen referred to as the Reed Syndicate in 1901, which fully completed the Golden Sea Route in 1902 and um, took control of the railroad that built the Choctaw Route. It would, it would make sense that the uh, Southern Pacific also would have probably been the one making the play for control or possibly dealing with um, the Reed Syndicate and then eventually the SP taking full control of the Rock Island at some point like during the Depression. So I'd imagine that the SP would have been trying to be uh, the same like size and a competitor to the Santa Fe because the Santa Fe, like, again, it was a, it was a very big railroad. I mean, it was, I don't know how big it was, but I think in this case, it probably would be close to like as big as what BN would have been when it was first created. And we're talking a railroad that would have existed in the 1800s. So like what, 80, 70, 80 years before Burlington Northern existed, a railroad of comparable size would exist. So the knock on effects of this, I would say is that the Santa Fe and Southern Pacific more or less, um, would consolidate traffic into um, California would bring up potential outcomes for the rest of the country. The Union Pacific never expanding um, into California since the Western Pacific wouldn't be a merger partner would likely push them towards other options. And given that they took over the Katy and Missouri Pacific, it would make sense that UP's management would pursue them. 
No idea if this would affect the Milwaukee Road any, but I would expect the UP to try to consolidate its hold on the Northwest. And um, let me see, did I put that on the map? I did put it on the map, but um, given that they, um, the Milwaukee Road did have like an on-again, off-again relationship with the Union Pacific, I'd imagine that um, the UP might be interested in taking their line from Butte to Seattle over Snoqualmie Pass. They probably wouldn't care about anything east of Butte, but given how business culture was back then those days, it wouldn't really surprise me if they wouldn't want to upset the Chicago and Northwestern too much. Even if trying to take bits of the Milwaukee Road was a smart idea at some point in history. And the only real wrinkle in this plan is that uh, the UP only went as far as Yakima and the Milwaukee Road went through Ellensburg, which um, I actually can't just name this in on the map. There is like kind of like it was like a hundred or so mile gap. I can't really search on this map since it's a my maps. I can't really search distance on it. But considering they did shove an interstate through there, I do think they could have gotten a rail line if they really wanted to. Other than this, I don't see the Southern Pacific and Santa Fe um, having a more a hostile relationship affecting anything else. I do still think something like the BN merger would have happened eventually, and I doubt the ICC would have gone for a cross-country merger. So I, th I still do think this leaves um, the idea that they're like SPUP would, would have merged and then they would have gotten BNSF at some point. So I, do, I don't know if this would have really affected things too much, just um, what routes the railways would mutually own would be a little bit different, but... You know, that's the history of the, uh, well, it's a little bit of the history of the California and Nevada Railroad and just what I think would have actually happened. So the last one we're going to talk about today is the Mid-Pacific Railroad. And this is um, the weirdest one to me, at least, and the one that came the closest to happening. It was planned to connect either Kingman, Arizona, or Las Vegas, or, or Los Angeles to Southern Washington. And bits of this line was actually uh, constructed. They did want to take various railroads and kind of cobble them together into one railroad that would connect basically the Great Northern to Los Angeles through Nevada. And um, it, there was also railroads between um, Las Vegas and Tonopah, Nevada, which is the Las Vegas and Tonopah Railroad, the Carson in Colorado, which connected um, like Carson City area to Southern California, which is the which is this guy that I'm highlighting right here. That was the Carson in Colorado, at least part of it. And there was like the Bullfrog, Bullfrog and Goldfield and the Tonopah and Tidewater and the Tonopah and Goldfield Railway. There was like a bunch of railways in this part of Nevada during a mining bonanza in the late 1890s, which I believe stopped in 1906 or 1907. And then the whole thing kind of dried up for these uh, railroads. And then up here somewhere, this guy is the Nevada Central, I think, which runs from Austin to Battle Mountain, which was a three-foot na narrow gauge, which would have need to be, uh, the gauge would have need to have been changed. And um, the paths of the railroad would take are kind of more my guess. So originally the railroad was only meant to connect the here Barstow area up here through central Nevada, through Mena, eventually to Austin, and I'm guessing this would have been the pass, the path that would have taken. Just a guess, no idea which one, because I can't really find a, a map of like where exactly it would be. Connect up here to Battle Mountain, and that was the original proposal. That was supposed to happen, and it didn't happen because the, the, the Depression happened and the guy who was pushing for it died during the Depression. And then uh, my best guess is that it would have either at some point or either have split and gone to Boise to hopefully connect with either the Union Pacific or maybe the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle to trying to extend down into Boise, or it would have gone north and eventually connected that bend to the uh, Great Northern. I believe it was the Great Northern or the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle. I'm not exactly sure which one it would have taken. Since this railroad was planned to compete with and or displace some of the Southern Pacific traffic, I would expect them to eventually push towards the Vegas option should they have actually gone for this as um, an idea. Because where they would have likely made the connection in Southern California, they would have had to deal with the Southern Pacific. And uh, McKingman, Arizona to Pasco, Washington routing would at least enable the Railroads to make connections with the Santa Fe at Kingman, Union Pacific at Las Vegas, and Boise potentially, and the Northern Pacific or one of the other hill lines at Pasco. And then um, finally the Western Pacific at Battle Mountain when it got built. And the stated goal of the railroad was to bring the quote-unquote nor Great Northern into Los Angeles. And the initial plans were only to connect Barstow to Battle Mountain. 
which would have been at best case connecting to the Santa Fe. So uh, what are the problems this would present? Besides not making it into LA or connecting with the Great Northern and needing to buy a Southern Pacific line, because by that, I think by this point, the Southern Pacific did own this line here, which is the Carson in Colorado, which would need to be regaged because it was also a narrow gauge line. So beyond all of those problems, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing was wrong with this route. Yeah, I, you know, I'm kidding a little bit, but the, the reason why I would expect the Vegas Kingman routing to make more sense um, long term is because it would avoid this, the, uh, the Southern Pacific and still connect with the Santa Fe and Union Pacific, albeit in not as nice of a place. And um, other history, Vegas was not a huge city in, in the 1920s. It was basically just a water stop with um, some Mormon settlers, you know, scattered around it with some semi-legal gambling halls. You know, it's not the world-renowned destination that it is today. And um, not connecting with the Great Northern is also another major issue with this plan, which um, is why I would think either A, they'd go towards Boise to try to connect with the, um, one of their subsidiaries building south, or to go north through this like really isolated part of Oregon to connect with Bend. Which, again, are just kind of my guesses at this. I would imagine option two would run along like U.S. Highways 95 and 20 and eventually connect at Bend. And this is the second option would save about 120 miles and still cross unpopulated desert like the other option to Boise. And I'm not entirely sure if um, adding 120 miles would be worth uh, connecting to Boise in the grand scheme of things. So I'm not really sure if given the opportunity, which one they would take. Um, connecting Boise with parts of the Southwest would have at least been um, maybe worth it given you would have connected some the farmland of that part of Idaho with the Southwest, which could make a slightly shorter shipping route between the Northwest and the Southwest. Uh, the population and market would be small, which um, is why I can't say I it would be sure if um, they would cheap out and go for the shorter distance or go to connecting um, Boise, which is a slightly longer distance. And like I mentioned, um, this was actually became the closest to getting done. Um, and like I said, it was because of the depression and the guy pushing it dying, which is what killed this off as an idea. And had this railroad been planned and like being been constructed by sometime between 1900 and 1910, I would imagine it would have gotten built. Um, the 1920s was, was after the peak of railroad mileage in the U.S. And the last major projects were generally built before the depression. And that was at the point where rail mileage really started going into a decline and eventually dropped off a cliff in the 70s. So um, what would have been like the long-term consequences of this? I'm not entirely sure what would have come from this aside from honestly it being a idea that came too late and the promoter died. The curse in Colorado is already owned by the Southern Pacifics and it was seen as instrumental to connecting to LA. Um, and the SP was known for not letting anything go uh, to preserve its position, especially in California. And on onto this, there doesn't seem to be any solid plans to ex to extend the line to anywhere the hill lines operated, other than a Wikipedia page that really isn't too much about this online. So I would imagine that if this had been built sooner and was more planned out, it would have eventually guess they would have bought the uh, Las Vegas and Tonopah, which would have gotten them from Las Vegas up here to Tonopah. Um, after doing more reading, I actually would have updated this map, but I actually forgot. So I'd imagine this like little gray line out to Tonopah, which is, let me just scroll in, you guys can see that, right? So I'd imagine they actually would have gone from Tonopah and either, and probably up along whatever road this is to Austin and just ignored Mina entirely. And I would imagine that they would have gone to Battle Mountain and I don't know. I, I'm showing the Pasco alignment, but I, I honestly, like I said, I don't know. They could have gone for the Bend one. I don't really know. I can't really say which one they would have preferred over each other because, again, this railway actually could have existed, but it also, again, it came too late and the person promoting it died along with the financial collapse of the Depression. But had it been built, it actually would have been a... Uh, more westerly like north south route because as far as i can tell the most western one that i know of runs from uh, el paso here up into montana and then there's also the uh, what's it called which we'll go over in one which went over in a past video about the rock island there is one from minneapolis to houston and then there's a few others like north south routes in between but west of uh, el paso there just really isn't one i mean there kind of is one from like los angeles to butte but i mean I, this is 
this would have been the most westerly of them. But again, um, so yeah, we'll, we're just going to leave the video here and um, I'm just going to let this go because uh, this is an experimental video. We'll see how it does. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. Do the liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and I will see you in the next one since I'm done with school. Production starting up again for you know the time that I have. Thank you and have a good day.